Art teachers of Reddit, do you ever cringe at your students art? If you have, what made the art so bad? I used to teach art to kids in Japan and they used to draw me with blue eyes and blonde hair even thought my hair and eyes are both brown lol. I've posted this before but once I was a real life model for a college art class. I was clothed and playing guitar for about an hour. As part of my payment, the students gave me their drawings after the teacher quickly graded them after the class. One girl drew a great portrait of me that was very realistic except she gave me a huge dong that came out of my pants, went down my leg and wrapped around my ankle a few times. She got a B. There was one girl who gave me a 3D pen art of a dog. If you don't know what a 3D pen is it's essentially a pen that melts plastic so you can create 3D shapes out of it. Well the dog she gave me was something that looked like straight out of a horror movie. Like if John Carpenter's The Thing got a hold of a dog. It was a bit unnerving to look at. Sweet girl with the best of intentions. I kept it on my desk for as long as I could. Now it's in a box somewhere in my office. I didn't teach art, but was a teacher. The high school photography club did a photo shoot I assisted with. One of the boys decided to mind jacking off. His classmate snapped a picture of it. Their teacher wasn't paying attention. The picture ended up in yearbook. One of my middle school yearbooks is hilariously low effort. Like, multiple people have the wrong names and there's a picture of a random old guy from the internet and like three places because the teacher in charge just let the students do whatever and didn't really proofread. I vaguely remember there being other things wrong with it, too, but I'd have to dig it out and look at it. Not a teacher, but when I was in kindergarten we had an art assignment to draw a monster from a story we had read. We drew our monsters until the time ended and I turned mine in. Problem was I gave the monster a dong. They called my parents and then asked me why I drew it like that. I didn't have time to give him pants, was my answer. This one got me. Not an art teacher, but I led some arts and crafts projects when I was a camp counselor. One week, my kids made dip candles. One girl accidentally made a giant dong. This thing had a mushroom tip, shaft, and balls. The balls formed when the base of the candle melted a bit when it was set to firm up. Dong joke unintended. To top it off, the thin, white wick hung perfectly out the tip of the candle. It took all my self control to not burst out laughing every time I saw it. Especially because the girl was super proud of it and kept it on her nightstand in her tent all week. The kids were super young so this girl definitely had no clue. It was a, um, fairy mushroom yes. A magical fairy mushroom to light up her tent and keep away the uh, dangerous heathens who would take her as a virgin sacrifice. Yes, definitely that. My art teacher asked me if I was doing drugs in grade 8. I didn't. I guess my drawing was just really really bad. Or really good. I don't understand art. The crap I draw when I'm drinking isopropyl. I teach screenwriting at a college in San Francisco and, honestly, the number of students who can't even string a sentence together is astounding. That's just the beginning. Don't even get me started on the ideas they pitch or attempt to write. If I see one more, guess what? Hollywood. It was all a dream endings I'm going to lose my mind. Don't worry, all those just a dream endings were just a dream. On my teaching practicum I was observing a boy in art class who totally hated being in art. He was constantly disruptive and hardly did any work. Eventually the teacher coaxed him into doing the final project for the class so he could pass. It was a mixed media assignment. If I recall correctly he found some tin foil and painted it brown. And glued it to a painted green background. It was supposed to be a football I think. But it ended up looking more like a piece of dog poo. I couldn't help but chuckle when I saw it. The extremely low effort attempt just made me laugh. Other than that, I can't think of any examples of art that really made me cringe. There are definitely cliches in art that you see teenagers make. For example, one fancy eye, emo fairies, but I see these things as a necessary developmental hurdle for budding artists. Don't diss my eye drawing, it's the only thing I'm good at. 
My mum is an art teacher and she used to work in a private boys school. One day she came home all defeated because she had to give four detentions to a group of boys making penises out of clay. Or recently she had a senior cry in her class because mum tried to convince her that painting a grown man sucking on a cow tit wasn't appropriate for their catholic school. All the time she marked art exam and one of the kids thought the statue was dolphins leaping but it was a running man. And was called the running man. She has a tough time sometimes. She came home all defeated because she had to give four detentions to a group of boys making penises out of clay. If you are teaching high school boys, you are gonna get a few penis based pieces of art. Probably even if you aren't teaching art. Yes one I can answer. I used to be a high school art teacher with a specialism in audiovisual art. I've seen some things man. Give kids a camera and they pretty much will film anything. I learned to enforce strict time boundaries for everything these kids made after sitting through 2 hours of the worst movie ever. Ever. It was basically one long shot of a few girls sitting on the couch pretending to smoke a joint and getting stoned. Now mind you, this was in a really religious region with fairly young kids, 11 stroke 12 years old, who had never smoked weed before. So it was basically their interpretation of what being high would be like. And their interpretation was basically a super hysterical dare ad. There was lots of freaking out, screaming and panicking and at the end they all OD'd in the most dramatic fashion. Of course the most cringe bad acting you've ever witnessed. And did I mention it lasted 2 freaking hours. It was dreadful and they were so proud of it too. I made sure to put it on a DVD in the hopes they'd come across it 20 years from then and feel the same horror as I did back then. Vindication. This one was amazing. Thanks for the laugh. I took a film 101 class at the local city college. One of my classmates made a film called P Story where his female roommate pee in a plastic cup in the shower. There were no follow up questions. She couldn't pass up the golden opportunity to be in a film. I'm an instructor for a college intro drawing course. Some students just aren't as practiced in drawing as other students, and I understand and accept that. Students may have had years of art classes before this one, or this might be the first art class they've ever taken. It's fine. What makes me cringe is when students don't follow the directions for what they're supposed to be drawing. Maybe they're using the wrong media, the wrong composition, or the wrong technique than the ones we're specifically practicing. That's what loses people the most points, and that's what gets pointed out the most harshly in critique. Bro just listen. I would love to see this dance to American Idiot. I teach English to Japanese high school students. A girl in class yesterday was drawing a poster for her emotions presentation. She wanted to show an injury, so she drew a finger sticking up with a line across near the top. She tried to add curled up fingers, but it was at the edge of the page and there was only room for one curled up finger on either side of the sticking up finger. She was super embarrassed and called me over to ask if it was okay, whispering. Does it look like finger? Or, other thing? It definitely looked like other thing. My art teacher laughed at me. It stung even more because she was actually the cooking teacher and had been forced into the role when the actual art teacher quit, and had warned us early on that she had no artistic talent. LOL I've been in a somewhat similar situation but it was more like when the math teacher quit and a teacher I know from history had to fill in and honestly he was pretty understanding. Like he basically gave us a week off of just reviewing our past lessons so that he could understand and teach us those and move on he was a better math teacher than the actual teacher that quit. I'm not an art teacher, or an art student, but my cousin suffered constant F's in art all throughout high school. Mind you, his art was really good, the problem was, his teacher had a huge bias towards what's considered real art. She said that his art was too surreal and promoted drug use. She's a B. Good grief. Teachers like this can be pretty oppressive. I think I made my art teacher cringe, but I'm still kinda mad about it. When I was young and in art class, my teacher hung my landscape painting upside down for an art show. I was a kid and so upset. Now I'm an adult and upset that it took years after that for an adult to realize I'm color deficient. I don't see blue and green correctly, so apparently I had blue grass and a green sky. Can't really fault her I guess. Dude, depending on the landscape that might have looked trippy as frick. In the art high school of my city a 15 year old made a rather crappy looking painting out of her period blood as her big project for the year. 
two guys from the same school got expelled because they made crap art in the bathroom, used their own crap as clay on top of the toilet lid. One of the guys transferred into my art course in another school. Decent guy if you forget the crap ordeal. I'm not a teacher, I'm a student. But one time I was in this life drawing class, and we had a nude model. We were sketching away, and I draw the lady, and at break everyone looks at each other's up and the model takes a stretch. Well, mine was very good, top notch rendition, except I accidentally made her shoulders too wide, which made the entire body too wide and, well the slightly plump figure of the model looked absolutely morbidly obese. Despite this, the drawing really was very good. Several of my classmates gathered around my easel and they were very loudly talking about how amazing it was. It looks just like her. And then I saw the model, who overheard these statements and looked up to see the drawing that so perfectly captured her body. She died so hard inside. I said very loudly to the other students, thank you, but I drew her way too wide. I accidentally made her look very heavy, she doesn't look like that at all. As a student we were assigned to draw something we didn't like. I proceeded to draw an incredibly detailed picture of the art teacher. His reaction to a mirror image of him when grading was priceless. I got an A because even though the assignment was of something we hate, it was the most detailed drawing he ever saw come out of the 9th grade art class. Dang. That's a power move if I've ever heard one. Glad to hear you still got a A though. Obligatory not an art teacher, but I am an art student. I don't cringe at individual pieces, but I cringe at people who don't accept criticism. Either their ego gets in the way and they refuse to change anything because they know best, they see all criticism as just your work is crap and you should feel bad, or they don't bother even listening because they just don't care. I've been in classes where people clearly submitted work last second and didn't pay any attention to the last crit and it's just so painful listening to everyone try to nail it into their head again. I've honestly always just wondered if these types just brush criticism off because they think art is completely subjective and their style is just too different to accept criticism. I personally wouldn't think that way because I can barely upgrade my stick figures with t-shirts, but I can see how the line could get blurred between abstract art and just plain lack of talent. Personally not an art teacher, but I took many years of art classes growing up and had a wild art teacher in high school. She once gave us a 45 minute slideshow of pictures of the seagulls she saw outside her window for absolutely no reason. Another time she spent an entire class telling us the story of how life is like a donkey and a skittle. She once ripped the drawing I had been doing for weeks and half to make it more conceptual. Without telling anyone, she left two weeks before spring semester ended. Years later, she occasionally sends me a message on LinkedIn to see how I'm doing. Lomeo. My art teacher was a bisexual widow who had buzzed hair and loved cats. She bought a puppy off a student, had a root beer float party every year after we made usable mugs, and when COVID happened, I was a senior she fired and kept my unfinished project. It was a tiny griffin. She told me she keeps it on her desk. Obligatory not a teacher, but I am a senior at a major art school on the east coast. I've witnessed enough cringe to last a lifetime. But the ultimate standout was this one artist who only made furry statues. Very detailed. Sculpted. Painted furry statues. I remember one in particular was a 2 foot tall panda bear hugging its own penis. Which was as large as it was. I never found out who made it. And I did see a couple of smaller ones in exhibitions every now and then. But it sort of became an inside joke amongst my friends. You know that person's going places though. The market for furry pee is incredibly high, and people pay hundreds for single illustrations. With statues probably a lot more. I've thought about sacrificing my dignity to make some real cash from the furry community, but haven't done it yet Lomeo. I am not an art teacher but in 6th grade I made a Gary the snail and I never got it back so is just wherever you are I'm mad at you. Honestly hoping I'll get a comment that says a student submitted an artwork of Gary the snail. Obligation to say I'm not an art teacher, but I did watch our teacher visually cringe at a student. It was ceramics 1. We were learning the very very basics of ceramics work so nobody was an expert. However, there is always that one person who expects all of their art to be a superb masterpiece that should be in museums for centuries. This class had not one, but two. They were mother and daughter too. It was community college. 
We were learning how to make a simple box, nothing too complex. We were supposed to turn these boxes into lanterns. Daughter decides she's too good for a box and wants to make a globe. Teacher had to explain that wasn't the assignment and she didn't know the techniques for it. She ignores him because she's an artist and tried anyways. Before it finally collapsed it looked like just a sad grey lump. Of course, instead of just doing the assignment she threw a fit and left early. Next assignment. We had to make large scale goblets. We were just stacking strips of flat clay and shaping them and it was mom's turn to snap. She wanted to make, I crap you not, a statue of a naked woman. The teacher explained again this was not the assignment, but was once again ignored. I watched this woman scream, cry, and smash her sculpture at least 15 times when it wasn't turning out the way she wanted it to. I felt so bad for that professor. He was an amazing teacher and I loved his class but those two made it insufferable for everyone else. God they sound like the people who expect to take a class on something and immediately become amazing at it, without any of the effort or work you actually need to put into developing a skill like that. So not an art teacher but in my art class this one dude kept drawing naked anime girls and the teacher was definitely like WTF man I didn't ask for this. TBH, I spent my entire year 8, 12, 13 yo, art class cringing. Not so much because of bad art but bad class quality. Basically, my teacher left at the end of the first half term. So we started in September. She left the third week of October to be the head of art at my cousin's school. The year is three terms long. The school decided not to replace her until the next academic year, the following September. So for 2.5 terms, we had teachers from other departments covering our classes. The school had a book thing for art cover. A little book of exercises for students to do when their teacher was sick. All told it had about 6 things, as it was supposed to be for single lessons. The school made all her classes use that book in every class, 3 hours a week, for the whole rest of the year. It never occurred to them to have another art teacher come up with some more full variety, and you couldn't freedom because you had to be able to point to an exercise and say I'm doing that one when asked. Tried them all, found 5 of them utterly uninteresting, so I ended up just doing the exercise draw a dragon every class for nearly 9 months. Not one person in my class gained any appreciation for art that year. One guy wanted to be an artist professionally, his mother, who happened to be a teacher at the school, kicked up so much stink that they moved him to another class. I know the feeling, little bit different, but because my classmates kept misbehaving, I got to spend the one art class I've ever gotten to try, grade 7, learning art history from a textbook, rather than practicing art, haven't really had an interest in art ever since. Not a teacher, but I took quite a few high school art classes, I did cringe once for one poor girl. She'd signed up for AP art and was really trying super hard, but it was painfully clear even to me that she was missing a lot of technical skills. She couldn't draw well, and as we were a 2D focused class everything else struggled because she was missing that underpinning. I hope that wherever she is she's still doing art and enjoying herself. Not sure if this counts, but I really enjoyed watching my literature teacher. Literature is art, cringe at one of my assignments in high school. We read the classic The Lady and the Tiger and we were supposed to write an ending to it. She read a few of them out loud in front of the class, and mine was one that was randomly selected for this. I don't remember much of it, but a few passages like, he didn't see as the piercing claws ripped his eyeballs from their sockets. He didn't feel as chunks of brain matter were torn from his skull she clearly hadn't pre-read the ones she chose, and she was visibly getting sick as she read. It was great. My art 11 teacher waved me over at the end of the year and said listen, I'll give you a 50% if you promise never to take art again. I took the deal. I'd love my high school art teacher to respond. Year 8, doing abstract art and she told me that my abstract painting was the worst piece of art she had seen in her 25 years of teaching. 20 years later and I'm still wondering how the heck I could get that feedback for freaking abstract art. Any art teachers care to explain? Not an art teacher, I have many skills but I'm beyond awful at art. Took an art class where a teacher was proudly lecturing that there is no wrong or bad art, just our best efforts. This was at the end of the fourth class, he passed my desk, looked down, then said well okay, maybe there is bad art and kept walking. 
Still cracks me up today to think about. Don't feel bad for me. My art is horrendous. It wasn't art. I was drawing a graph in physics class. The teacher was just walking up and down. He saw my graph and said in my native language looks like crow poop. It was too funny I didn't feel insulted at all. Honestly, he had a point. Kaka kash dem polandu. I don't teach art but I do teach performing arts. The cringiest thing students do is pick angsty cliche topics for their performances and they always think they're so deep and original. For example, I teach one topic where they have to create a play with a political message. It should be about something relevant for their time that is. Covid. Donald Trump. BLM movement. Influence of things like TikTok would all be relevant topics. They always pick generic things like bullying or body image issues and they always do the exact same story. I tell them every year to pick something that's in the news at the moment because then their piece will actually be original. Their response is always, I know this topic gets done a lot but our take on it is completely original and you'll be really surprised and blown away at what we have planned. I never am. If you watch the SNL school theater show parodies, they are spot on with what I'm dealing with. I am not a teacher but for an assignment for art class in the 8th grade we were supposed to, to make caricatures of famous artworks and so I chose Jake's Cal as the temptation of Saint Anthony and I made Satan aka the big dragon looking thing into Hitler and put a huge Nazi banner behind him and I named it the invasion of Poland. My art teacher walked up to me and looked at my drawing and squinted trying to get in all the detail. Looked at me and told me don't don't you think the flag is a bit much? I mean you already have Hitler and all and promptly forced me to replace it with something else. Reading through this thread is giving me two major reactions. One of amusement at remembering similar cringy things I saw from my peers at school. And one of dread as I remember the endless parade of cringy things I submitted. My art tutor at uni told us a cautionary tale of a girl who didn't turn up to any crits for her entire second year and then submitted four drawings of dragons for her final piece. All second year's final piece had to be an interpretation of a book. It didn't meet the brief and apparently were very juvenile and basic composition wise, and had liberal use of glitter pens. She defended her work telling them she'd gotten loads of excellent feedback on deviant art. To this day my tutor hates deviant art. I'm an art teacher teaching kids in China, and as long as the student is making an effort, whether they have brilliant talent or not, that's all that matters and I'll shower them with praise regardless. I find that the Chinese education system bashes out anything creative in them and swaps it with memorizing, extra classes, constant exams, tests, and homework. Chinese students have brutal childhoods in school. To answer the question though, one student covered a large piece of paper in red paint, used his hands and everything, and when questioned about it said it represented murder. Maybe not a cringing moment, but it definitely made me question what kind of crap he'd been watching lately. Not an art teacher, but someone who took several art classes. The main thing that makes me cringe is the sheer number of arrogant bad artists in the world. It's their style so they need to brag to everyone they know about how genius they are. I remember when I was in elementary school I had a cool idea to draw a picture of a bunch of eyes looking at you out of a black background. But I never got around to drawing the background. So my teacher goes up and asks me what are you drawing and I told her eyes and then a few minutes later it dawned on me. Boobs. I was drawing a ton of pairs of boobs. So I tired to add eyebrows but that just made it worse. So I threw the whole thing away. I actually am an art teacher. But this thread has so many comments from non-art teachers now that it is redundant. In short, I love all the art my students create. I really do. Some of them aren't good at it, but I still like the charm. One kid wrote Dong when he was drawing a coke can though. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.